This is example four of chapter seven permeability. And for this example, we're going to calculate flow rate. And again, this is similar to the previous uh, example, uh, example three. We're calculating flow rate in terms of volume per second per unit width into paper. So basically, this is area per second uh, unit. And this permeable soil layer, so it's in the middle here. So that's the direction of the flow. So we have this permeable soil layer. And then we are given uh, the reading of two standpipes. So we know the head loss from, let's call this point A, and this point B here. So from point A to point B, uh, we are given this head loss, small h, 4 meter. And we also know the height of this uh, soil permeable soil layer H1, so that's three meter, and then uh, so we're going to estimate this flow rate Q. Okay, so first of all, this is um, so you have a permeable layer, basically, and you have an impervious layer. So this is impervious layer. Okay. So first of all, this is called the uh, artesian condition. So basically, you have an impervious layer on top of a permeable layer. So it's like the impervious layer is uh, pressing on this permeable layer. So the water pressure inside this permeable layer is actually higher than um, permeable layer with free surface. So this is uh, artesian pressure. You can tell the water pressure, which is measured by the standpipe, rises all the way up to this point. So it's much higher than just the regular water table height. And then uh, for this artesian pressure, so basically we're given the pressure difference between point A and point B. And to calculate the seepage, we're going to need Darcy's law. We're going to use K equals, uh, Q equals to KIA. And in K is permeability, I is hydraulic gradient. So f using this notation, this is uh, basically H, use small h over distance L times A. Okay. So to calculate the flow rate, we basically need to find what A is and what L is. Okay. So for this example, um, this A, cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow, this is very similar to the previous example. So you need to find the direction perpendicular to the flow, the cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow. So that's the flow. Okay. And this area here, this is capital A. So that's the cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow. And this is, so this angle here is alpha. Okay. So capital A is H1 times cosine alpha. And L, that's the distance from point A to point B. And this is again similar to the previous example. So we know this horizontal distance is S. And this angle here is alpha. Okay. Then the distance parallel to the flow direction is defined as L. So L is again S over cosine alpha. Okay. So this is S over cosine alpha. Okay. And that head loss, we used delta H previously. In this example, it's simply H. And this is 4 meter. Okay. So with all these, we can calculate the flow rate. So Q equals to KIA equals to, and this K is 0.08 centimeter per second and I is dimensionless so we have a dimensionless number so 4 cosine 8 so that's uh, that head loss divided by oh, excuse me 4 is head loss and then that L is basically S over cosine alpha so this is cosine alpha cosine 8 
0.5550. So again, this is um, 50 over cosine alpha. Okay. So that's how you have that cosine 8 there. And then times cross-sectional area A, which is H1, that's 3 times cosine alpha, which is cosine 8. So that's 3 times cosine 8. Okay. And then uh, if you substitute all the numbers here, mm, so the only thing we need to pay attention to is to convert this centimeter, um, convert this centimeter per second to meter per second. So this will be 0 0.08 times 10 to negative 2 meter per second. So if you convert everything into meter, and then the flow rate is 0.19 times 10 to negative 3 meter cube per second per unit width meter. Okay. So that is the flow rate for uh, this example here.